right, we're back again, and I'm back again with my good friend Mel. It's been good to see the enormous amount of comments that we're getting at the bottom. Well done. You're looking at the material, you're digesting it, you're remonstrating about it, you're actually, you're not always accepting it, and this is what we wanted to see. This is where the discussion happens, this is where the debate happens, and this is where the conversation needs to go. It's because of you people that, and looking at this new material. This is new material. It is uh, controversial. It is, in some case, confrontational. We understand that. Uh, we're the first to actually introduce an awful lot of what we're talking about. We've now introduced who we think Muhammad is. We now introduce where we think Mecca is. We pretty well are introducing a whole new Islam, not the 9th and 10th century Islam, but one that actually exists in the 7th and 8th century. And that's why it is causing an awful lot of uh, backlash. And we're getting people who are upset, others that are happy, people, some who are just in between, people who are just curious. Uh, well done for uh, coming on board with us, well done for you know, digesting it, and better yet for those who are actually introducing us to some new material that we didn't even know. Now, Mel has been on for the last two or three weeks. We've had Muran on, and it's been terrific to get both their expertise, but now we're moving to someone that is new, a new individual that we want to introduce you. Uh, and to do that, I want to bring Mel on board. Mel, are you there? Yeah, um, great to be back, Jay. So, yeah. well, this is someone that you know. This is someone that you have been working with. This is someone that has an enormous amount of experience. Go ahead and give us some background to him and then, then introduce him to the rest of us. Yeah. So, Joe has been on my channel uh, recently. Um, he's the guy who has been studying Islam for the last 20 years. He is super knowledgeable, um, particularly on the historical narratives from the 7th and 8th century. And... Uh, yeah, maybe perhaps Joe would like to introduce more. Um, Hi, thank you very much. That's a bit too much of an introduction. Well, um, yes, thank you. I work, uh, uh, I suppose I work most of the time on wikinoa.org, which is uh, one of the things say, I- Say that I, one more time. What's this, uh, say, um, slow down. What uh, are you saying? Wiki what? Ah, wiki Noah, uh, as wiki, W-I-K-I, -I, Noah, as in Noah and his ark, N-O-A-H, dot org, wikinoah.org. Okay. I'm one of the co-founders of wikinoah.org. It's a, a, a project uh, run by, um, actually, the nascent Sanhedrin project in Jerusalem. And uh, it's for um, uh, original research on instances of commonality between Judaism and other religions. So we encourage an original research in this pro on, on this website. It's like a Wikipedia wiki, but um, we, 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 we love original research. That's what we want. We want original research uh, and new ideas on um, explanations of instances of uh, sort of commonality between Judaism and other religions. Um, and we, we don't want the explanation, it's just a coincidence. <laughs> we, want, we want theological sort of philosophical discussions, historical discussions, research and things like that. And so we have this um, project which is going on right now, which is Islam's Origins. I'd like mm -hmm. to invite everybody to come to, do, to look at that as well and get involved in that if you've got something to add to. And uh, so that's the project, that's the website which I'm involved in most of the time. Well, Joe, it's great to have you on board. It's great to have you with us. I'm kind of finally, finally to meet you. I've heard about you. Mel's been talking about you. I think what Mel and I would like to do this uh, uh, this evening now, for especially, is to have you go and open up this uh, real hornet's nest concerning the name Muhammad. Uh, we know yeah. that Muhammad, according to the traditions, uh, is the prophet and that he is introduced uh, certainly four times we find him, find him written in the Quran. We know that he was introduced uh, by Abdul Malik, uh, possibly as a person or it could be nothing more than a title, on the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem, also on the coins in 692, and then also on the Caliphal Protocols the same year. So certainly this person or this title named Muhammad is significant to Islam. It is their prophet. And it is from he that everything is settled and uh, is supported by. So you're saying, however, that Muhammad may be something else. And you have a whole other paradigm, an entirely different uh, uh, narrative about Muhammad yeah. that comes from your research and you do, as you said, you're a researcher, this is what you're doing. And you spent 20 years in this area. Listen, we'd love to know what you found out. Go ahead and share with us and introduce us to this. Let's see who is it you come up with concerning this either person or this title or this individual Muhammad.
Okay, well, thank you. So, um, first of all, I think it's important to distinguish the period of time we're talking about in the 7th century and the early 8th century, uh, especially 7th century. We're, we're really talking about not Islam, but pro what I call proto-Islam. Um, Proto-Islam um, is meaning the religion out of which Islam grew. Islam was really invented probably by um, Abdul Malik and people after him, the Abbasids especially. Um, but there was something, there were some religions, plural, um, which amalgamated or fixed together somehow to create uh, Islam. But there are certain key points um, which come from one or two of those religions, which we're, which, which we're going to call proto-Islam. And uh, so um, that would be, for example, why did they choose the word, the name Isa instead of Yeshua? Why did they choose the name Yahya instead of Yohanna for, for Jesus and John? And this word Muhammad, um, what does that mean? I mean? It's there pretty early on. We see, have this reference to the Tayyid, the, 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 the Mahmid, being mentioned there by Thomas the Presbyter very, very early on. And, but did it have the same meaning in proto-Islam? as it does in modern Islam. And there's no way that it could. There's no way that it could have the same meaning. Um, but we, we've got to look at uh, some original sources to understand where this word came from and how did it come to be applied to somebody who I think by that, by the way, I just want to sort of reiterate that, that there was this identification that Mel made of um, possibly the historical Muhammad being uh, Ibn Kabisa, and I, I think that's spot on for many, many reasons. I think it's a spot of genius and should be developed. But how did he, Ibn Kabisa, come to, whose name is Iyas, how did Iyas come to become called, known as Hamid? Uh, and that's a, a, a lot of stories. So the first thing I think we've got to look at is of the Quran or the Quranic materials, the materials which become the Quran, we call them Quranic materials. Um, in the Quranic materials, it talks, it mentions, it, mentioned to, to this Muhammad person or Muhammad thing. And it also mentions that the, uh, it, it has come to confirm and uh, sort of back up the previous scriptures, the Bible, the books of God, Qutb Allah in the Bible, that's the Injil, the uh, Evangelion, the, the Gospels and the Torah, the Old Testament, New, uh, the Old Testament Torah and the, and, and the prophets. So if it's confirming these books, as it says it does again and again, and we throw out, of course, all the tafsir, which comes later saying, in t trying to say that these books were abrogated somehow, but from the Quranic materials, it says it's confirming these books. So the best idea we can get for anything that the Quran is talking about is from those books itself. So uh, when it talks about Mahmed, as if everybody knows what Mahmed is, uh, it, we should probably try and find out what that might be from the Hebrew scriptures. That's the starting point of where we go. So from the Hebrew scriptures, well, you're not going to find the prophet uh, of the Arabian prophet Muhammad mentioned in the Bible, but you are going to find references. You're going to find the, the, the Hebrew word, which is cognate with uh, the, the Arabic word Muhammad in, in the Bible, Muhammad. And I'll show you that. Well, I'll share, I'll share the screen here. I've got a little reference here from Bible Hub where I can show you that. So I'll just okay. share the screen. So now we're going to Muhammad. So this is a Hebrew word, and we do know mm -hmm. it's in Song of Solomon 5.16. This is one that Ahmadidat gave in an argument. This is an argument that I've heard from many Muslims stipulating that if you want to find Muhammad in the bar, uh, Bible, you need to go to Song of Solomon 5.16, the word Muhammad, the glorious one, or the and there it is. Okay, you've got it up on the screen. Yeah, so that's taken from, that's the Strong's reference number, the Strong's Hebrew 4261. It's taken from the Song of uh, Songs, chapter 516, as you say it. You can see there, and it says Muhammadim. I don't know if you can see my mouse going across the screen. Yeah, there as I'm we doing. can. Yes, we can. Yeah. Muhammadim. This is a plural form, Muhammadim. And you've got down here other occurrences, the same word in, with different uh, grammatical contexts. And you can see here, I'm pointing at one, it says Muhammad, five occurrences. And I've actually already opened up those for you. So Muhammad, five occurrences. I'm showing you the bottom four here, which um, uh, are from Ezekiel. But actually, let's just talk about this Muhammadin first in the Song of Songs. I mean, that's a, a reference to uh, uh, the, the, the bridegroom of Israel. Israel is the bride, and, the, and, the, and the, this is the bridegroom of Israel. And, and I suppose you know who the bridegroom of Israel is, right? Well, yes, but hold uh, from, on a minute. From a Jewish point of view. Well, what's it from a Jewish point of view? Uh, the Lord. Okay. The Lord no. is the bridegroom of Israel. 
Okay, you know the word same... for that in Hebrew? Ah, that's so correct. that's why yeah. you're asking me because you cannot read, you cannot speak <laughs> it. Let me speak right. it for you, Adonai. Okay, let's do it. Oh but, yeah. But before you get okay, to that Adonai, word, I mean, that word is that's that's the bridegroom of Israel. That's what this song of Song of Solomon refers to here, Muhammadim. That's who it is. Okay, it doesn't refer to any Arabic prophet. Oh it dear. Refers to the Lord. And hold on a minute. Okay. Hold on a minute. I I, I want to yeah. back you up on this. So you're saying Adonai is what this is referring to. Muhammadim yeah. is there. And are you telling me that Adonai and Muhammadin are also plural? Yeah, yeah, Muhammadin and the other word is that, that's also plural. They're both a minimum of three. They refer to three. The singular a form. A minimum of three. So this cannot be dual, yeah. this cannot be singular. No. You're saying three or more. Well, there's the Trinity right there. Yeah. Okay. That word, singular form, would be Adoni, which means my Lord. So we, we have this concept of something called Birur Nitzatzot, or Nis Birur Nitzatzin, which means gathering the sparks, the holy sparks which have spread throughout the world. And so our project at Wikinoa is to gather the sparks, the holy sparks together, to bring us all together. You know, you're going to love some references. There's, there's actually a phrase. It's a, it's, it's, I'll actually say a Shema for you, because it's, 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 uh, it's evening time. I should say the Shema anyway. Shema Israel Adonai Elohenu, Adonai Echad. These three are one. That's what it says in the, in the Kabbalah. Okay, so... Ah, that's Deuteronomy 6.4. You know it. Of course we do. But I'm so, so I'm three glad one. to hear you say that. I've never heard you say that in public. Are, you the first? <laughs> are, are we seeing some history made here, Mel? By you actually coming on board and actually I admitting? This is, I think I, this is I, breaking there are you who admit this. Just, they wouldn't say that um, that uh, that Jesus was part of that that Trinity. They were or these three hundred one. They wouldn't say that at all. But um, these three hundred one. This is a this is acceptable. This is an acceptable point. <laughs> and I get here, and I hear what you're saying. All you're doing is you're following the evidence where it takes you, and that's what you do on on this wiki Noah. You're not sitting there to interpret yeah. it. You're just putting it no. out there. You're letting us come to our conclusions on it. And listen, we're right. going to sit there and come to conclusions, but I'm you're also excited because Muslims are going to have to deal with this now because Muslims always take me back to uh, Song of Solomon 516, and they say, this is category. This is referring to our prophet Muhammad, when in reality, no, this has nothing to do with Muhammad. This is actually to no. do with God. And it's not just any God. Yeah. It's not a God who is no. one as a monad. It's actually God who is one in three. And it's the same God that we <laughs> Minimum. Deuteronomy 6 4. It just gets better and better and better. <laughs> well, this is, it gets, you're going to find the next part even, even more interesting, perhaps, because uh, as we look at this word Mahmed, five occurrences in the next part here, which I opened up here, this is from Ezekiel 24 16, Ezekiel 24 21, and Ezekiel 24 25, and Hosea 9 6. And these are prophecies. Um, the word Mahmed is used, specifically Mahmed. Um, and it's, uh, it's, 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 you know, this, the story of Ezekiel, um, Ezekiel's wife was killed. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Do you know? Yeah. So he says, I'm going to, I'm about to take away from you your, the desire of your eyes. God says to Ezekiel and his wife is taken away. He kills, his wife dies. And he says like that, so will the desire of Israel be taken away from their eyes. The pride of their eyes will be destroyed. And it's talking about the temple, temple of Jerusalem, which is destroyed. And also, um, uh, the, 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 the treasures of the temple will be, they were sort of stolen and um, all the, the treasures of silver and the, the gold and everything was taken out of the temple and they were, it was ransacked. And then it was trampled by the Gentiles for a period of time. So, um, so this is Mahmed again referring in this case, one of the three, one of the three instances or one of the three Mahmedim, if you like, refers to the temple, temple of God, the, the appearance of it. And this is how uh, this word came into uh, Proto-Islam. Now, Proto-Islam is really uh, what Gnostic Christ kind of Christianity is very important. It's kind of a mixture of Gnostic Christianity and Judaism, but Gnostic Christianity um, is very important in Proto-Islam. This is where the words Isa comes from, where the word Yahya comes from for Jesus and John. And uh, this point here, um, referring to the, the, the Muhammadim as the groom, bridegroom, of course, in Christianity, the bridegroom is Jesus Christ. There is actually a reference to that. Uh, I've got the reference. I put it down here. Matthew 9, 15 and Mark 2, 19 to 20 are uh, the two cases where Jesus is referred to as the bridegroom. Uh, so that makes the Song of Solomon, the Song of Songs, Muhammadim referred to Jesus Christ from the Gnostic Christian point of view. And uh, the Gnostic Christians have got 
a view of Jesus Christ which is different from, from, from others in that uh, Jesus has three identities in Gnostic Christianity. Those three identities being the, uh, the luminous spirit, okay, the luminous spirit, um, the uh, crucified appearance, and the, uh, I believe it's messianic uh, uh, role, the role of the Messiah. So, so Can I jump in? Yeah. This sounds very like Manichaeanism and it's Manichaeism. Exactly is Manichaeism. Yes, and it came yes. from Mesopotamia as well. Exactly. Manichae this is not Christianity. Yeah. Another so this strike is... for Iraq, the Iraqi thesis. Absolutely. Like... Absolutely. You're spot Just on explain that, Mel. Answer. Explain what you mean by that, because not everybody knows why you're bringing this up. Go ahead and explain what is it, what, why is it you're bringing up this Manichaeism and Iraq into the equation? Um, what you're yeah. saying, I've heard connected to um, Mani of the religion Manichaeanism. He was a guy who came from Mesopotamia. So that's another connection with yeah. the Iraqi thesis. Exactly. And, yeah. and what's interesting about him is that he was given the title Seal of the Prophets. So there's a similarity with Muhammad. He also um, was said to have been visited by the angel Jibril, the exact term, when he was 12. So for, it sounds to me like that um, a lot of the mythology around Muhammad was brought in from this Manichaean connection. But the, the interesting thing is he used that uh, tripartite description of Christ that you just mentioned. Yeah, he did indeed. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's exactly um, the, luminous, the luminous spirit, uh, the, Jesus the Messiah, the messenger. And the, I think the, the, the word is patibilis. Jesus, the, the suffering appearance, the suffering one. So uh, that's quite interesting because, um, so this, this, this would be the Mahamadim. This would be the three, from the Christian point of view, of course, the, the Lord is, 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 is Jesus Christ. So, um, so the, Muhammad, the Muhammad, Mahamadim would be Jesus, but one of his, one of the Muhammads in Jesus, in the Gnostic Jesus, would be the suffering appearance, uh, which is why we have reference in the, Quran when it says that so what if he died was slain are you going to turn on your heels and it's a refer reference to Muhammad what if he dies or is or slain are you going to turn on your heels at the same time it says concerning the, the Rasul the messenger Messiah they didn't crucify him neither did they kill him but it was his appearance them that they killed they, they it appeared to them so which is again saying, so they crucified his appearance, the, the, the patibilis, if you like, from the Manichaean point of view, they crucified the suffering's appearance, but they didn't crucify the Messiah because the Messiah is the Ahmed, which Jesus gave to his disciples the night beforehand in the form of the, 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 the bread and wine. He says, this is my body here. I'm leaving, I'm giving it up for you. So that wasn't even on the cross. What was on the cross was the luminous spirit and the appearance but the Messiah had already been given to the church, if you like, beforehand. So he didn't, he wasn't, the Messiah continues the work from the Gnostic point of view. This is obviously not, not Christianity as we know it, but from the Gnostic point of view, the, the, the body of Christ, the church, continues the work of the Messiah until they're reunited again uh, at the end of time. So, Joe, what you're doing, and it's fascinating because I see what, what both you and Mel have, have found. Here you have, even in chapter 4, verse 157, which you're quoting right now on this reference, it, this is also, this is another uh, suggestion, this is another uh, side post, you might say, of this influence, this Gnostic influence on the Quran as well. And that's why yeah. this Manichaean or this Manichaean background, this Gnostic background, which fascinating, as Mel's pointing out, these Gnostic, these Manichaeans are way up north. They're way up in places yeah. like Kufa and in Baghdad, in that area, which yeah. is hundreds of miles away, lot, far too far away. But that's probably where the Quran was then introduced. We're saying this, Joe, yeah. because we're also well, finding experience. out that the Quran probably was put together up there as well. Yeah. Listen, Joe. This is this is all so exciting, and there's an awful lot of material. And I see now we've only gone we've only done one of the four that you want to get to. Could you now just kind of wrap up and tell, give us a quick overview of what you just said? Give us a synopsis of what you said, and give us a significance of why this is important. And then what we'll do is we'll close out this uh, episode, and we'll come back and do the other ones in future episodes. So go ahead. Over to you, Joe. Okay. So um, I was. Uh, saying that this uh, word Mahmed in the uh, Quran uh, 
ha having a, a reference, the way it's used, it's like everybody knows what it's being referred to. So from the Gnostic Christian point of view, it has to be referring to Jesus Christ or one of his aspects, one of his three aspects from the Gnostic Christian point of view. He has three identities. Uh, and those three identities are together mentioned in Song of Solomon 5.16 as the, the Lord, which is the Christian Christian God, uh, Muhammadim being these three aspects of, of Jesus Christ, the bridegroom of Israel. Those, that three, that minimum three that this Muhammadim refers to, is, to reiterate the point, is that Rasul, word and spirit. The meaning, the, the, man, the man from the Manakain point of view, the Rasul being the Messiah Jesus, the word being the suffering uh, crucified Jesus and the spirit being the luminous spirit, the guide. Um, so that's the Muhammadim. But when the Quran talks about Muhammad singular, it's talking mostly about this crucified word. Um, that's the one which was crucified, the one which was killed. Um, and it seems like the reference to a plural Muhammad has been taken out of the, it must have been there in the original Gnostic, uh, uh, Christian materials, which became the Quran, but it, well, it didn't make it to the final cut. And so we've got a kind of a redacted, chopped up version, which hasn't been making full reference. But if you take it at its word, if you take the Quran at its word, when it says it's come to confirm the previous scriptures, and then just go and look through the pre previous scriptures to try and find the references, not with the tafsir of Islam in your head, but trying to look at it from a seventh century point of view of people who are familiar with the word Muhammad, what would it mean? Then it means Muhammad, it means the Lord, uh, and it cannot mean a human being from a Gnostic Christian point of view. Cannot mean a, I mean, if think of the word, he was Rasulullah, Kalimatullah, wa Ruhman Hu. He, he, he is not described as being a human. They say he was the, su the son of Mary because they're emphasizing that this divinity was born of Mary, unlike certain adoptionist Christians who, who believed that it was a man who was born of Mary and then at the baptism he received the Holy Spirit and was adopted by God. They're saying, no, he was not adopted. He, didn't, he doesn't have to adopt a son. There's no need for him to adopt a son. Everything belongs to him. But he was born of Mary. And, and these words have been completely taken out of, context, out of the Gnostic Christian context. Anyway, so that's the point of this point. But there's, as we said, a, a few more things to talk about. So. Okay, we're going to do that. Uh, go ahead and, and, and unshare your screen there, and then we'll just get the three of us back together again. And we'll okay. end off this section, this, this uh, and then we'll go ahead and start the next one. It's, yeah. So, listen, this has been terrific, Joe. Thanks, Mel, for bringing Joe on board. Uh, looks uh, surprising you say what he says. It's great to have you actually support what we've been always assuming, what we always knew to be the case. The, the, it's, I, I don't think there's any would deny the plurality and the unity of, uh, of, of the Godhead. It, it, from, uh, as long as they've been studying Kabbalah, I mean, we know we've, we've got the Ten Sefirot, for example. This is all one God. Um, Boy, so I, we would I'd like you to come down to the speaker's corner and set someone straight there because <laughs> they would never accept what you just said. We, we don't have <laughs> they many need to study Kabbalah then. They do, yeah, we I mean, don't have many Kabbalahs. You're not allowed to study this until you reach the age of 40 anyway. So that's why a lot of younger would, might not necessarily be interested in. Are you over 40? It. Are you uh, over 40? Well, <laughs> I would yes, never I'm thought so. 40. Your voice is very, <laughs> your verse is very, I don't know who you are. I've never <laughs> met you and I don't see your vision. So you don't look it's like you're youthful over 40. It's the that studying the Jewish theology has on you. It makes you younger, you see. So well, you, you sound younger. You do a good job. Listen, you've been a, it's been terrific <laughs> to have you on board. We're going to be doing more of these with you. This has been great Thanks, because Jerry. not only are you unpacking scripture, not only are you looking at it and you're seeing where the evidence goes, you're actually letting us come to our own conclusions on it. That's and the that's important thing, yeah. Mel and I do yeah. do that, and so we're gonna we're gonna uh, value it, and we're gonna run probably further than you are willing to run. We'll even re we'll even <laughs> recite the word for you in public when you need to do so. <laughs> Thank goodness we don't have those kind of restrictions, but I understand how far you have to. But listen, thanks again, Joe. I've never met you before. This is a first time. I'm excited by where you're going. You've done over 20 years of experience of working on this. You know your material. You know your stuff. Now, what we want people to do is to listen to what he's saying and respond down below. They respond. There's a lot of comments there. We keep it open for that reason. We want to be peer-reviewed. This is the nice thing about YouTube. You get peer-reviewed immediately. We don't have to wait for six months down the line for you to write an article. Get there, write it. You'll do it within minutes. And both Mel and Joe will be looking at it and they will be responding to you. Uh, so go Can ahead. Do that. If anybody makes their comments and reviews at the end there, please, if you're Muslims, please only use seventh century sources to review what I've been so talking about. Don't use this... <laughs> Tafsir to interpret what I've been talking about. Please only use seventh century sources. 
did you hear that? That's from the mouth of uh, Joel. I've been saying that for months. It's nice to have you, Joe, say that as well. Mel would also agree. We're not interested in the ninth and 10th century. We're only interested in the seventh century. Keep to the evidences on the ground. Now look and see what Joe did today. He actually went both to chapter seven, verse 157, chapter 61, verse six in the Quran. He went to your scriptures first, Muhammad, uh, Muslims, and went back to where the, you're saying those scriptures are found. He went back to Song of Solomon 516, and he unpacked it, showing you not... Uh, showing you what the scripture is actually saying. Uh, please, for heaven's sakes, you might dispute with that, but then do so using Hebrew. Do so understanding that from the, the uh, context of what Muhammadin means, what Muhammad means, and then also what Adonai means, and come back and see what, tell us what you think, because this is important. Also realize what he said at the end there when he is talking about the influence of the Gnostic writers on those who are putting the Quran together. And these Gnostic writers, as Mel said, are from the places of Kufa and up north. This is not happening down in the Hejaz. This is not happening in Central Arabia. This is happening much further north, probably about a thousand miles further north. Well, this has been fun. This has been great. We're going to have more of these. Thank Thanks, you. Joe, for coming on board. Thanks, Mel, for being there. This is Mel, Joe, and Jay. Over and out. <laughs>